They're the pride and joy of the Australian native plant community. Yes, I'm talking about the incredible grevilleas. Much love for their different forms and unmistakable flowers. Gardeners just love them. And being one of those gardeners, it's great to be somewhere where there are so many to see. I can't wait to show you this amazing spot. And this spot, in fact, is the Illawarra Grevillea Park Botanic Gardens. There are grevilleas and all their different shapes and colours everywhere. I can't wait to show you some of my favourites. Ray, it, it is a great collection. Do you know how many varieties of grevilleas you've got? There'd be three or four hundred at really? least. Yeah, yeah. That, it... that includes the hybrids and the species as yeah, well. Yeah. We're still, after all these decades, still learning. Like here with Bull Eye Beauty, yeah. that come up here as a seedling. Um, I tried that for, took me nearly over 10 years before I said, yeah, that was good enough for the market. Right. And now it's probably one of the, one of the great cut flowers. Yeah. Cut flowering. Well, the, cut, yeah, the florists just love it. That's right. They say in all the books, you know, after finished flowers, give it a trim, but they never stop flowering. So what do you do, a, a light trim? or will they take that heavy prune? A lot of people have these lovely gravidias in their yard and they're going up there and they say, what will I do? Yeah, moonlight, for example. Moonlight, moonlight goes up there. Five, five six, seven okay. metres. <laughs> there, moonlight, bang. Yeah. Just like, bang, straight off. Doesn't need any foliage and it will be back growing. You'll see shoots come out of the hardwood within a fortnight. See, these are the things that we're, you know, we're starting to learn and I'm, I'm really appreciating your time today. You and I could talk for days. I'm going to have a look at, at Bull Eye Beauty. Yeah and a few others, mm -hmm. and I'll catch you during the day. Good man. Good on you, buddy. Great to chat. Tell me, tell. Well, you can see why Ray absolutely loves Bull Eye Beauty. Just look at that flower. A huge pink bloom, full of honey. I just scared the bees off. There's just the bees are loving it. Now, the florists love this one. The gardeners love it as well. And it was found by accident here in the garden. So when you keep your eye open for hybrids because the bees are moving from one flower to another and suddenly you can get a freebie, a little seeding that comes up, but you've got to keep your eyes open. A fabulous plant and a great screen, good for privacy, good for birds and great for bees. Another reason why this garden is so important because it has a collection of really rare species from out in the bush. This is Grevillea bracteosa. Beautiful little spidery flower, but you hardly see it in the bush, but it's been protected here. But there are ground covers as well. Look at this fellow here. If you're going to grow one of these ground cover grevilleas, give it plenty of room on an embankment, plant it right back in the middle so they can grow to the edge of the garden and really display this horizontal growth. And notice the flowers are quite different. These are what we call sort of toothbrush. They're not cylindrical, they're little toothbrushes with all the colour and the stamen sticking upright. Beautiful thing. Now, if you don't have room for a ground cover, why not buy a standard? Many decades ago, Ray and others around the country were grafting grevilleas, the ground cover ones, onto these standards. The understock like in a rose or a citrus, is different to the one at the top. It's got to be very closely related. In this case, it's Grevillea robusta, the silky oak, the big, the big rainforest tree. So you've got plenty of power in that trunk, and then you've got this cascading flower. These are royal mantle, Grevillea royal mantle. As an ornamental in a pot, in a tub, in a lawn, it's just giving us a, a completely different look at an Australian native plant. If you keep your eye open, you can strike gold. And that's what Ray did with that little seedling that suddenly popped up that became Bull Eye Beauty. Well, there's another way that new plants can suddenly appear, and it's what we call sports or mutations. It happens on quite a few plants, but it doesn't happen that often. This is lime spider. Now, I know not everybody likes variegated foliage, but this is gold dust. This is a, an absolute gold rush. And in a hedge or a wall or a screen, I think lime spider is hard to beat. We all have favourite grevilleas for different reasons. This is one of my favourites. 
is called Grevillea leucopteris, and I see it when I'm touring through WA looking at wildflowers with my groups. And suddenly you come across way out in the middle of nowhere in WA, these incredible forests of it. It's also not only known as Grevillea leucopteris, but its common name is smelly socks, because that's what the flower smells like. But the flower, well, it starts out in this beautiful pink bud, then it gradually turns to green, and then opens right up to this beautiful creamy plume of flower. Smelly socks, <laughs> it's a cracker, the beauty. Oh, I love to see a man at work. Well done, pal. Oh, wow, there he is. You've got a new garden going in here. Can I give you a hand with this? Yes, sure we can. Now, you've planted, yep. obviously, thousands and thousands of plants here. You had great success, so show me how you do it. OK, this is how we do it. Now, you want some water crystals in here for a start. Only about that much? Yeah. Can I add a little bit of water into that? You can do. OK. You tell me when to stop. That'll do. Right. Get a couple of handfuls of that into the bottom. OK. Now, this is a wetting agent, not water crystals. We've already got those in the hole. This encourages water to go deep down into the roots. What do you got next? This is a slow-release fertiliser. How much would you like in there? Handful on the bottom and a handful on the mound of dirt. OK. Handful in the soil. So you're really preparing this plant beautifully. Well, OK. Now we're going to fill that hole full of water. OK. I'll turn that off. OK, thanks, Ray. You've got to have a moist hole to plant into. If it's dry, don't think you can plant it and then water later. So this needs to be dunked in a bucket of water. And as you can see, all the bubbles come out. So that's wetting the soil, OK? you'll notice that Ray has created a saucer around it. Home gardeners and landscapers, pay attention. You young lot. <laughs> the other trick, then, is to actually put your foot in there and squash it down. That means that the air is not going to get in there and dry it out. Yeah. That's really important. You know, there's a misunderstanding that native plants like it dry. Well, ones out in the desert do, but the rest come from forest country and they like, especially when you're planting them, they like to have some moisture around the roots. For their first 12 months, don't forget to water them. And especially during the summer and the hotter months, you need to water them once a week. Not wet, keep them just moist. And you'll have success like Ray's had here in this beautiful garden. Look at that. As you say, in flower in no time at all. Ray, it's been a great day. Thank you for sharing. It's been great after all these years again. It has been good to come back. Fantastic. And it's grown so much and it's expanded. Hasn't it? Honestly, Grevilleas, get down to your local garden centre this weekend. The choice and the range is unbelievable. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Good on you, buddy. Thank good. you. Thank you.